Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Mind House episode 89. And yes, bro. So when we reach episode 100, inshallah, when will that be? That's like in 11 weeks. So in 11 weeks, that's like three months. Three months from now is like January. So, oh boy. So January, yeah, bro, we can probably rent out like Wem Wembley Stadium or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's go for it. No, what we what could have been an option is that we do an in person one, right? Yeah, it could do. That could have been an option, but I don't think COVID. January is going to be like a COVID spike, I'm sure. Maybe, yeah. So tricky one, man. But I think something at least will be different by then. I'm not going to yeah. say much more than then that. Um, Actually, even even for you, right? Like, is it in January? Yeah, when... I'm loosely planning to do make changes in January, but nothing's concrete yet. But we'll yeah. see. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe episode hundred will be something special, something different. Shall I've got to do some. I've got to do some sort of giveaway or something. Don't know mm. why, but big one zero zero. It's got to be something we can do. Maybe uh oh, I could give away one of those mugs that we got. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah why not the other one broke I had to, my wife got me two Mind Heist mugs but one of them one of them's broke did oh I forgot to wear my Mind Heist t-shirt man oh, I should be wearing that um, we she just launched like a loads of Mind Heist merch <laughs> I mean just that the, the logo thing everywhere yeah I mean, it, it does look quite good to be honest but I don't feel like I, I actually do feel like there's a there is a Mind Heist mindset I think there is actually, oh, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I do actually think, I think, you know, like for example, Freshly Grounded, they have a, probably a bigger audience than us, but uh, I think the physical uh, events, they solidify um, this idea that there is actually a community of listeners. Mm. And if we did a, some kind of event, assuming, you know, people actually came, then it would, again, it would solidify the fact that, oh yeah, because especially with a podcast, like you might feel like you're the only listener. You know what I mean? You don't really know yeah. that it's a thing. But to and, be fair, uh, if you put all of our numbers in one room, I say one room or even actually a room wouldn't be big enough, but like a hall, we'd be shocked, man. Yes. Because I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm an avid podcast listener to other podcasts. Well, I used to be, I don't have much time, but I, this podcast I've listened to for well over 10 years. Mm. I've never emailed into ever wow. or, or like who I mean? like which podcast they're just like they'll be like tech shows or mm. but like quite small or like uh i used to listen to some um they're like video creators like youtube creators or whatever mm. but i've been listening to them since i was like 13 mm. um and i still listen to them today mm -hmm. but i've never ever sent in anything or it's just crazy man Mm. Um, so yeah, I think generally it's like that. A lot of people don't have an inclination to email in or whatever. They just enjoy listening and you know, yeah, consuming yeah. that media for sure. Yeah, and we we just got to keep coming up with the ideas and stuff. Mm. But yeah, it would be good to have some kind of, you know, what, bro? If I was in the UK, I would just be like, okay, I'm gonna be in this area, this masjid, this restaurant, whatever, at this time on this date. If you if you listen to the podcast and you're in London, just come. You know, we could do a double meet up, bro. We could do a UAE one, and we could do a a, a, a London one, or whatever's whatever's easier for people here. Yeah, That'd be yeah. Cool. And then we could yeah. live stream it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would do that in the UK. I feel like in UAE, no one would come because no. obviously most of the listeners are in U UK, and so yeah. And even if no one turned up, bro, we could just do like. We just record an episode regardless. <laughs> People could jump in and out if they wanted to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just have the camera rolling. Yeah. I think that's that'd be pretty cool, uh, man. Imagine like if we did that, like we could have like me like so let's say you were in the UK, we could I don't know, set up just even a laptop or whatever and just have it recording an episode mm -hmm. at some restaurant or some venue or even yeah. like the back some floor of the message or something mm -hmm. and we just start talking and having a discussion if people want to turn up and get involved and share ideas that'd be really cool like having a conversation like that um yeah. because um 
I don't know how messy it would be. If a lot of people turned up, it might get a bit too crowded. But I think it'd be cool, man. Mm, Let us know, guys. If we're not even involving the audience, man, the audience could email us with some ideas. <laughs> the thing is, I don't think I'm coming UK. So, oh no. What if we raise the funds, bro? What if we like fly you out here like a celebrity? It's not so much a money thing, really. <laughs> just, yeah. just avoiding it. Yeah, it's COVID's COVID's got you quite scared, huh? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I'm gonna do my first test in a few days. Um, COVID test. Yeah, but it, it's not the nose one. It's actually they don't have it in most countries. It's called a DPI one, where they take blood, and all it, it only tests for. Uh, if you if you're fighting a virus of any type, right? Um, and the, right. the the special thing about it is it gives you a result in ten minutes. So oh, right. that's why I'm doing it. Basically, it's cheap and it's uh, quick. Um, yeah, because why why are you doing it there? Yeah, because um, you know the Abu Dhabi Emirates. So obviously UAE okay. has seven Emirates. You can't come into the Abu Dhabi Emirate without a, a negative test. So I'm going to leave the Emirate. And to get back in, I'm going to need that test. So, yeah. Right. I did the other test recently. I got really sick for like 10 days. Mm. And um, like halfway through, my symptoms changed. And I started getting a cough and stuff. Mm. Um, I was like, oh, here we go. This could be it. And the day before, the last, so I had, it was like the beginning of the week at work. I dealt with somebody that was like very grimy coughing and splurting everywhere and just <laughs> yeah so i was just like oh this could be it and then the next day i just felt rough mm. and then the whole so i thought oh here we go um initially i did it's all online now initially i put my symptoms in they said oh it's unlikely you've got it and then when i when i started getting my cough and stuff i redid it and it said oh you should go get a test i went and did a test and then it was it was really I thought it was really inefficient because they gave you all the stuff. So they gave you a pack through your car, car window mm. of all the swabs and whatever, but then you have to do it yourself. And I was, I was convinced I was doing it wrong. Yeah. Cause like one of the things was like, you have to stick this, like, um, like a cotton bud stick thing, whatever they're called, like Swap. where your ton, yeah, where your tonsils are. And I don't have tonsils. Mine were removed when I was four. Mm. so i was like i don't i don't know where they are like i don't know how to have them because oh just rub them where your tonsils would be i was like i don't remember where they were <laughs> Cause i don't, I don't like, know where mine are i, I don't, don't know where tonsils are it's like it's been 23 years anyway but then it's like do it for 15 seconds but you can't even leave it in there for one second because the moment you do you just that's it you're gagging so mm. i was like well this is awful i definitely mm. didn't do it for 15 seconds because it was i just couldn't and mm. then that same one, you have to stick up your nose for another 15 seconds. It's like, <laughs> oh, put it up there until you feel something like a hard resistance. I was like, goodness sakes. So this would have been much better if someone was doing it for me because then they'd know what they're doing. You don't have the choice of someone else doing it for you. I don't know. I think only if you're like... But then again, the people that are there are probably doing it all day that they've just given up. They're just so <laughs> tired of it all. But that, that leads me to think like all these testing, all these stats and stuff are all going to be a bit... Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it's not as... I think that's pretty wide, well known now. Yeah. Um, that even the, especially the deaths. Well, the, actually, no. The the cases are completely wrong because whatever the let's say there are a hundred new cases today, in reality, there's probably five hundred new cases. It's just they didn't get tested. They didn't have mm. symptoms or they didn't get tested. So that's all wrong. Then the deaths, the deaths are overreported, isn't it? Because if you um, die and you have it then they assume like for the paperwork they assume that you died because of it mm. rather than just a, a, a correlation they assume it's causation you know yeah because so both, when I both numbers will be wrong yeah when i spoke to a paramedic he was like well all deaths end in a cardiac arrest so technically you could put a cardiac arrest for all of these causes of death however yeah. Because you don't know what's led up to that. Yes, Just because you've had yeah. symptoms doesn't know that's you don't know that's why you had a cardiac arrest yeah. and died. Or even even so, if you p tested positive, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I remember when we first sort of did episodes on this. I was very overly cautious, and I still am to an extent. However, 
I think because it hasn't impacted my circles as much as I thought it would, mm-hmm. I've, I've considered it as less of a threat. It's not something I'm necessarily scared of mm-hmm. um, or, or too concerned about. But then it's just, it's just really intangible. That's the issue I have with it. It's not like I feel when I look at a cold or I look at like, yeah, like a common cold, for example, or like chicken box or. You, you know, can't tell much difference between. Yeah. A I cold can, I can, and these, this. these seem, yeah, these seem a lot more tangible to me. Like it makes more sense. Maybe because they're more established and they've been so for so many years. Yeah. But, but this, there's no straight facts. Like mm. even the symptoms are like, oh, could, all of these things could be symptoms. And mm-hmm. this one rare thing could be a symptom. And then like every day you're hearing like a new thing that could be a symptom. It's like, I go through all of these all the time. Bro. You know yeah. I mean? Sometimes I, sometimes I see news headlines and it's, it's just terrible, man. Like it will just wreck your brain to be reading those headlines regularly. Like it's Definitely. just all negative. It's all, uh, you know what I noticed they do the language they use is like, um, so they will say typical headline. Yeah. Uh, Minister of Batik suggests that, and then they put the worst possible case, uh, worst yeah, possible yeah, scenario, yeah. right? So yeah. then, if you if you grill them on it, they'll be like, "No, no, we just said suggests," but yeah. nobody reads like that. They just see the worst case scenario, and then they think, "Oh, that might happen," right? Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's not good, man. We need to protect ourselves from that. But bro, on the um, podcast topic. I wanted to ask you about this uh, freshly grounded card game thing. Do oh, you know wow, what, we got that. Do you know about yeah. it? Yeah, we've got a, we bought a pack. Um, what is really it? gone through it. It's really cool. So, like, I did a poster for it just as promotion. Um, but it's basically, it's basically like, uh, I don't know, kind of reminds me of a game called, um, I'm not going to remember it now. Uno. No, it's not Uno. Oh, there's like this sort of like black comedy. Is it black? No, dark comedy. That's the word I'm looking for. Dark comedy. Oh, that game. really, really popular one. Yeah, I forgot. It's like it's one cool. of the top sellers on Amazon for years. Um, I think yeah. I know what you mean, but I, I can't think of the name. I can't think of the name. Either way, it's essentially lots of like thought provoking questions that you have to answer. Uh, oh. And it's good for like couples or even a group of people, but it's quite it's quite deep. Like, you know, some of them may be like, I don't, I haven't, I'll be honest. We, we, we started it. We got, we did like two questions and then I can't remember why we had to stop. Um, but yeah, they, they, they basically it, it's encouraging people to open up and be a bit more vulnerable and to share their experiences or their feelings about certain things. And it forces you to answer a direct question about something that you might not necessarily have spoken about if you were, you know, left to your own devices, you know, yeah. such as, oh, when was the last time you told your parents you loved them? Or um, I'm assuming these are ones I'm going to make up, but like stuff like, oh, can you do, one? can you get them, bro? What do you mean? Oh, can I get them now? Should we do them? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do them on the, that'd be, that's a good question. That's a good game. All right. Can we, I'm going to pause the pause. recording. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. We're back. This is it. Mm, I need to get a better webcam. Yeah. Um, Says, having had the pleasure of conversing with people of all skills, backgrounds, and experiences through our podcast, I've been able to appreciate the art of conversation to a degree I never could before. Now we hand the conversation over to you. And then it says a bunch of other stuff because we have Mm. no time to go through all that. But yeah. Mm. Shall I send Faisal? uh, uh, I'll send him this. I was going to send him a selfie (laughs) with the cards. There's quite a lot. Like... Yeah, but this is like so. That's one individual card there. I don't know how many there are in total. Is it like top quality? Yeah, man. It's like um, oh, I don't know what this. Sort I of reckon this would be is. easy to do, like in terms of yeah. just printing it and stuff. Um, but you gotta obviously think of all the things. But I'm scared that yeah. it's gonna be like really personal questions, which I would will. answer, but just maybe not on record. This is how to play. Be how vulnerable, to play. Don't be judge. vulnerable. Don't judge. So. Oh, so you broke the first rule already. I mean, because you don't want to be vulnerable. I'll be vulnerable in certain topics. Okay. See, I'm more of a shuffler, but my wife's more of a Jumpy. just sort of just sort of pick it up and do it. Why are they? Oh, it's like they've been taken out, but they're in the wrong order. Probably your okay. son. 
Probably. Oh, is there an order? Perhaps. No, as in like some of them are backwards and some of them are forwards. Oh. Yeah. Um, all right, shall I pick one? Go on. We could, but we should, we'll just answer them together then. Oh, this is. See, some of them are quite like simple. Okay. Like this one says, "What does the perfect night in look like to you?" Perfect night in. Yeah, man. Oh, shall I go first? Yeah, bro. Uh, perfect good, night man. in. So night meaning after I'm not when I'm not working. Yeah. Um, I guess like something productive, like reading, oh, like reading for a good amount of time, like thirty minutes or an hour, and maybe cooking something. Really. And what else? Cook. So in the beginning of the evening, I'll cook. So then I can eat and then read and then I don't know, like maybe watch watch uh like uh Iyad Qunaibi video. That's it. Watch Iyad Qunaibi video uh with my family. Yeah. There you go. I was waiting for you to say that at the end with your family. Because <laughs> for me, like immediately when I think perfect night in, I just think the first thing is I've got to be with my family. Yeah. Well I'm cooking for my family. Yeah. Yeah, but you were like, oh, I'm eating with family. I'm going to do something productive. It was almost like you were avoiding <laughs> being with your family. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The reading would be <laughs> would be alone, I suppose, but the rest would be yeah with family. Um, but but yeah, like I I for example, yeah, if I was to watch uh, a film with my family, yeah. I wouldn't find like that's family time. Like that's actually alone time. Whereas. Yeah. You know, True. like the Ed Konebi video, for example, it's something that actually uh, you watch together. Maybe you pause it, you discuss it, and uh, afterwards you might discuss it further. But for for those that don't know, maybe even you don't know, bro. Like Iyad Konebi, he's a Jordanian. He's um he's got this sick YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel where he will break down uh, topics that I don't even know how to describe this guy's channel. But he he's he seems quite versed in the Islamic sciences. Um, he's also, uh, uh, I think he's got a PhD in pharmacology. Okay. So yeah. his, his actual career thing was pharmacology, but then I think he got uh, into the Sharia and stuff. And um, he, so he makes videos about, for example, uh, the schooling system. And he'll like tell you about the history of the schooling system and how the Western schooling system was set up and how it, the industrial revolution and this and that. And then he'll talk about, yeah. okay, that's how it came to be. And that's how, that's the status quo today. Now, is that in line with how, how does Islam view education? Right. And then he'll mm. look at like the principles of that. And then he'll be, and then the next video, which I'm looking forward to watching now was all like, okay, if, if, if the, um, schooling system or education system was built from Islamic principles, how might it look, right? So it's, um, you could say it's like intellectual, um, but, but it's, he's good at speaking and stuff, right? Uh, other example, he did a whole series about, uh, he calls it the women series, and it's all uh, topics and issues that women are facing or women asking questions about, and he goes through it, but he goes kind of, you could say from base principles, uh, from first principles. So he'd be like, okay, uh, for example, a big thing is, you know, women all working, like being, becoming a, a norm for women to go out and work. So instead of just talking on the surface level, he'll be like, okay, where did that start? Why is that happening? Yeah. Where are the influences? And so he'll break it down. It's not like an Islamic, like a lecture thing. It's like, it, it's more um, diving and into it and exploring yeah, the details and analysis. history of it and stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's really, really good. It's in Arabic, but if you know Arabic, definitely search him. So yeah, bro. What, what, what about your ideal night um yeah like i said it i would just i'd have to be my family probably like some moroccan tea some mm -hmm. sort of desserts everybody's together watching something that isn't like a movie because with movies like you get quite you have to be quiet you know and just mm -hmm. exactly like yeah. we we like watching documentaries a lot so mm -hmm. it's like a documentary or something about like where we're from like either tunisia or morocco or something okay. sort of, like that video you, know, you sent me yeah, bro, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we would do. I could watch stuff like that all the time. Mm. Um, um, yeah, man, that's my kind of night in and mm. just knowing that I don't have to work the next day. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? And the kids are asleep, bro. Oh. And it's just, oh, oh, that's prime, bro. That's oh. all I want, man. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you watch a documentary if your kids are awake or you just can't no, so, awake? No, no, you can't watch anything when they're awake. Right, it's yeah. just 
my son will refuse. He just won't allow you. Like yeah. he won't even watch the TV, but the moment you put it on, he, he's going to want something. He's like, mm-hmm. no, nope, watch something else. All right. Yeah. Let's power through some of these. Uh, some of these might not be um, doable. I think some of them are like, oh, this one's a bit, how, 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 how can I help? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know how to answer that. So you're supposed to ask me. Okay, how can I help? Go on then. How can I help? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a big uh, thing I have to think about deeply. Can I help? I only get to ask one thing of you. <laughs> how can I help? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I suppose I could be a bit more punctual with uh, my parts and stuff. Yeah, that's uh, it, bro. Have a have a regular timetable for mine heist. Yeah. That's how you can. Oh, I don't have a regular timetable for life. Yeah, yeah. I try to. I try to. I can't mm-hmm. even. Guarantee. Like yesterday, I was meant to pick up my dad after work, mm-hmm. and I was so late off work that by the time I was off, he he couldn't come out anymore. He was he had to have his medication and sleep. Mm-hmm. And I felt so guilty, man. It just drives me crazy. Like things I try and do, I just physically can't. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, I will try, bro. I always do. I, um try and push it when i can um, okay how do i help off. you how do you help me just go easy on me man it's been so critical no, I'm joking. <laughs> um i don't know bro just keep making dua for me bro that's all make dua for each other remember each other in our, in our duas you know because we've been doing this for ages now and we've benefited each other we benefit a lot of people inshallah so that's what's important just make dua mm. that allah keeps us sincere and of benefit and makes this useful because i don't want to do something you don't I mean, sometimes we do things for years and years and then it's like, at the end of it, we don't see any fruits of it and it's like, there was yeah. nothing, nothing came out of it, you know? Yeah. So if something come out of this, mm. being there, mm. it'd be really cool. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a question for you, a follow-up question. What, what have you learned from doing this podcast? Um, I think one of the biggest things I've learned is that we started this podcast um, two jobs ago when it comes to me mm. like we started this podcast when i was in retail and when i was in retail i had a very black and white image of the world mm. in general i think i did i did have a very black and white image of the world and then doing the work that i do now and being exposed to so much that could be interesting actually i should go back and listen to a few episodes that maybe we've spoken about similar topics then and now but like i've been exposed to it different side of the world or at least locally even different side of things i've never seen before things i've never realms i've never dived into and now i've realized a lot more that things aren't black and white and you know good and bad obviously there's good and bad in the dean but good and bad like bad comes out of very particular situations and circumstances uh you know people aren't just suddenly bad there are things that lead them to be that way um, and there's steps that people take and slippery slopes that people can end up on. You know, people can get to places where there's no return um, just through bad decisions. And then it, because of that, you start seeing that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from so much, like things that you don't know, um, things that you think are good for you one day, but they're not for you. You know, then you, you see other people that have done that and, you know, it's ended up really bad for them. But in general, what it's allowed me to do um, and I was speaking to a brother about this uh, a few days ago. Mind has, has allowed me to um, not just take things at face value. Like certain things are black and white uh, in people's eyes, especially you know Muslims in terms of like you know it could be all sorts of all sorts of political things or all sorts of uh, hot topics. Um, you know, like the Black Lives Matter thing was a good example. You know, we got a lot of heat for that, but when we spoke about that, we didn't take it as face value. Everybody shouting that this is great. So it must be great sort of thing. We break things down and we really try and analyze it. And it allows you to play devil's advocate a bit because it allows you to see what the, the, you know, the other side is seeing. Um, Mm. I've definitely been on both sides of a spectrum lately and I can see the humanity in everybody on each side. Do you know what I mean? Like your enemy has someone has something that's driving them to do that and I'm not saying that any sort of ulterior motive or whatever is a justification for somebody's bad actions however it allows you to dissect people's thought processes quite well but at least that's mm. what i think anyway bro what about you 
uh, I think I've, I've benefited and I've learned a lot from, oops, uh, from really speaking to you, bro, like every week, um, mm. because I think we're quite different in terms of you're more, I mean, almost anyone's more emotional than me, but <laughs> um, <laughs> like you're more emotional, you're more spontaneous. Um, and also you, you like have a job, you know, and you know, most of my friends like, are. Yeah, I, a lot of my friends, most of my friends, they're people who like don't have normal jobs. They don't live that kind of, uh, you know, what the life, the lifestyle that most people live. So yeah. it's really good for me to be in touch with someone like you who's going through that and, and learn how it is, you know, for you. And then also, I learned really the the benefit and the the potential of just consistent effort. Yeah. Just consistently doing something blindly, blindly doing yeah, yeah. something. Um, and uh, yeah, like this podcast, like we kind of just blindly upload episodes. We don't necessarily judge oh, like that topic did well. So let's do a topic on that. Let's do this. We don't do that. It's like very organic and, you know, largely I think because of the consistency, well, we are where we are now. Alhamdulillah. Mm. I think it's also quite, I find it quite fascinating because if I remember correctly, I think I approached you about doing a podcast. Is that right? I feel like I had it in my head that I wanted to do a podcast. Mm. Yeah. I can't remember. It might have been something that we both had in our minds. But I remember in my memory, but I could be wrong in my memory, I wanted to do a podcast, but I wasn't. I'd been talking about doing a podcast before and I didn't really know who to do it with. And I spoke to you about it because obviously I'd seen your content before and I thought it was quite beneficial. Um, shout out to my mum. She introduced me to your content, bro, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I say that to her now that I still say it to her, bro. <laughs> I was like, yeah, see, mine, mine, it won't be no my house without you. <laughs> but yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And I think it's, what's fascinating is actually we don't really talk too much outside of mind heist. It's not like we speak every day. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not a bad thing. Like, I think that's fine. Um, but what's interesting is like, I don't think we ever run drive stuff to talk about. And with some people, you just can't, we're very different. And with some people, you can be very different and just not be able to land, you know, yes. land on the same page with them. Mm. Um, mm. I think, you know, I'm, I'm happy to admit that me and you are very different in maybe our approaches, the way we deal with things, or the way we look at things, but still, we seem to still find, you still still seem to be heading a different in the same direction, but in different ways. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. For um, sure. I think good example of that was the episode we did about uh, voting. Oh yeah, wasn't it? Like that was really good because I guess we were disagreeing, but like we were disagreeing in a really good and civil way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And that's you know, I hope that maybe that can be an example for people that do sort of disagree and take it a bit viciously, you know? Yeah. Like we could have just been like, Oh, okay. You're, you're a Muqtada or whatever. <laughs> like could have gone to extremes, but some people do that. Do you know what I mean? Some people take that to, to wild extremes. Anyway, let's, let's go mm. through, bro. Let's go through. All right, here we go. Oh no, this one's going to be very uh, personal, bro. <laughs> here you go. Tell me one of your anxiety slash worries let's talk it out <laughs> let's talk it out i mean worries or anxieties worries or anxieties god but it's so i find it so crazy that you have to think about it whilst as soon as i read that like i immediately know what's bothering well, I, me <laughs> I, I i thought of one thing uh, straight away but i've actually mentioned it already which is just actually i mentioned it just last episode which because it's it's not the strongest of worries, but it's like the fact that I feel kind of uh, uh, weak, um, mm. like when I compare myself to oh, yeah, you did, yeah. like uh, uh, my dad's generation or whatever. It's it, well, it doesn't give me anxiety, right? It's just something that I feel like I should I should fix, right? Let me think, mm. try and think of something that's actually like makes me, you know, makes your your chest tight. Because um, mm. I definitely. I definitely had that, um, you know, before, like when I was in the UK and I was teaching, for example, yes, definitely had that, but just for the last few years, 
I mean, I suppose sometimes I'll be like, sometimes just talking to people, you know, people that I don't know, uh, yeah. makes me a bit anxious. Uh, calling people, like for example, you know, you got to call your bank, you got to call, um, yeah. I don't know, immigration or whatever. Yeah, that stuff, it's the type of stuff I really put off. You know, I really don't like it. It's not comfortable. So I don't know. That's as close as I can get. Wallah. Mm. Mm, I guess so. For me, I've got one of the biggest things I've got is like, I just have this sort of because of everything that happened to my dad and everything that I thought was so far away is suddenly a lot closer. Mm. It's almost like I'm heading straight towards this brick wall where all my progress is going to stop, you know, because when you've got, you know, your life ahead of you, quote unquote, in terms mm. of all the opportunities you can have and all the future and the things you can decide. It's like, ah, oh, there's so many, you know, there's, the, you know, the only way is up. Yeah, you have downs and stuff, but you're always going to bounce back. Mm. But I've just got it in my head now. Like, I can't fight it where it's like, oh, I'm approaching like basically the end of the line in terms of, I don't know, it's almost like I'm hitting, I'm hitting like, old old age like very soon <laughs> do mm. you know what i mean like you, i'm a lot more cons- I, I basically feel like i'm going to be put into a position where i can't be as risky as, as i risk you know take yeah. as much risk as i used to yeah. and i'm going to be being a lot more conservative which is and con- generally speaking financially or you know even anything generally you are more concerned you should be more conservative in your later years of life because you're sort of retaining your wealth, wisdom, experience, yeah. et cetera, to pass it on. Mm. Whilst in your younger years, in your 20s, I'm still, you know, I'm only 27, bro. You should be, you should be able to be a bit more riskier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm just, I'm r- rattling towards, at full speed, towards a, a, a point in my life where I know I'm just going to be super conservative, um, which may limit my growth as a, you know, financially or, um, mm. in terms of knowledge in terms of everything so yeah. that's my biggest anxiety like especially now like i've started i've started venturing into different sort of type, especially financially i've started venturing into different areas um learning a lot of things i've had yeah bro <laughs> i've had i have to learn no, I've, I, it's, I think for me it's because like when it comes to like investing in the stock market or whatever it's something i was always interested in but like now i've i've learned so much in such a little time yeah that even people are approaching me and asking me questions and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, it's, you know, it's just, this. and then I'm like, wow, I've actually somewhat developed some sort of skill in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And it's, it's only really going up, you know, the more I learn, the more I'll, you know, but because of the whole, you know, Tunisia thing, because of the responsibilities, all this stuff, it's like, Oh, I can't be as risky as I want it to be or mm. these opportunities. And it's not just that, like these few years, I met so many different people that have through networking have, um, open me up to so many opportunities and stuff. And once again, it's like, Oh, it could, it could have come to an end. But you know, what, what try, what I try to battle that anxiety with is the fact that, you know, we have to work on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. and um, we, well, my, yeah, my laptop wasn't charging. Yeah. We have to work on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we, we trust him because at the end of the day, like, you could think a lot about your future, but even tomorrow isn't promised. So how do you know that you haven't got, do you understand what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, what is risky is obviously we have like um, empirical ways to judge risk in a way, but mm-hmm. in the end, what is going to turn out to be risky is ultimately hidden. Yeah. And so sometimes just trusting in Allah more can change the outcome. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't know if there's something I've actually heard that is like legit but it's something that i don't know where i got it from maybe i heard it somewhere or maybe i just thought of it myself that the more so let's say let's say you you jump off a cliff right with your yeah. with your you know makeshift um gliding thing whatever yeah now if you have more tawakkul there's a higher chance that allah will actually help you out and make it go smooth yeah now, like I said, I don't know if this is legit, but it's just something I always, I always felt, you know. So, like when I don't know, uh, getting married while being self-employed or anything like that, I've always just thought, well, I, I want to do this or I'm going to do this. So, I need to have more tawakkul because the more tawakkul, yeah. the more it's going to work out. Because if I trust yeah. in Allah, then Allah will kind of repay that, if you know what I mean. 
by by helping you. Is that legit? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it could also be something to do with being a parent. Um, I know a lot of parents speak about you know all, as soon as you have kids, you everything sort of stops for you and it starts for them sort of thing. Mm. And sometimes, sometimes uh, you know my kids are still young. I've, one of them is what nine months or so. The other one's three years old. But when I look at the three-year-old, so amen, it's like I've, I start realizing, oh God, he's grown up really quickly. Like, because, mm-hmm. and then it's like, oh, before you know it, he'll be like, you're very fond of your own nostalgia. Like I'm fond of my childhood. Mm-hmm. You know, this I've got great memories and stuff. And then you realize that these are his these are, this is his nostalgia being built right now. Like this is mm. his memories being built right now. And then you realize like when you were growing up, like when I was growing up, I didn't feel like my parents were doing anything for themselves. I felt like it was all about me, mm. you know? But then when I look at my son, I'm like, Oh my God, I don't think too much about, I don't, I feel like I don't think too much, enough about his future. And I'm still very self focused on focused on myself in terms of trying to push myself to provide more for my family. However, I still see that as more about myself than I do about him. If you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just not obviously on him. Yeah. yeah no but then I don't want it. I don't, I don't my, my little anxiety is like, I don't want it all to pass so quickly that by the time I realize I should be focusing more on him, it's kind of a ship has sailed, you know? Um, that's you know that's something like now for example like i can hear your son in the background and he's quite he doesn't he probably doesn't need that much focus in terms of his basic needs if you know what i mean yeah um but the the change happens so gradually that you don't notice it like before you know it they're like talking mm. they like they've got their own opinions they like some dislikes and all that stuff mm. but you're still in like it just happens very subtly and then you wake up one day and you're like, oh my God, like, wait a yeah. second, he's got his own likes, dislikes, personality. Whoa, 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 where's he picking all this stuff up? Where did he get that from? And yeah. it's like, oh my God. And then some of these, like, I know he's three years old now, but now there are memories that he's making that he may remember at adulthood. Mm. You know, there are certain things that maybe two, three years old, very, very small like, little things I, I feel like I still remember from that age. So it's like, oh, there are things now that will actually remain with him for the yeah. rest of his life. So it's... It's mm. not like a matter of, oh, don't worry, he's not going to remember sort of thing. Like, yeah, yeah maybe. I, I definitely, <laughs> you know, I definitely, I felt like that about my son from day one because it, not in the sense where he's going to remember it consciously, but subconsciously it's going to impact him. Really? You know? Especially yeah. stuff like giving attention, you know. So like, mm. uh, you know, he's with you, but you're on your phone. Stuff like mm. that. I feel like almost... Like, like you said, the, his needs are basic now, easy to fulfill in a sense. Um, but I, I feel that if, if I'm not giving him attention, if he's looking at me, he's glancing at me and I'm not glancing back because I'm on my phone, yeah. I feel yeah. like this is actually going to impact his confidence, maybe self-esteem, maybe. So yeah. that's the thing I'm kind of concerned about. I was always been concerned about that from day one. Mm. Um, it's difficult because you, you're trying to like, obviously you have stuff to do and whatever, but yeah, this is why the, what I want to do is like, I would just want to, the, the way, the way I realize that I need to deal with that is at a certain point in the day, I need to say, look, no, don't expect any more productivity from this day. This yeah. the rest is now purely like for him, etc. cetera. Mm. So yeah, yeah uh, man. And it will come to a point now when like your son is demanding for your attention anyway, um, wants to do stuff yeah. with you. Like I'll yeah. come home and he's just straight away, like jumping on me and, you know, wants to do this, wants to do that. And all you, all I want to do is just chill because it's been long, but yeah, you've got to give him your few, you know, a few minutes. And yeah. Uh, but you can tell like the eagerness, like he's very, like my son's very physical, very eager, very, always happy always excited to see you but mm. a lot of that is attention i've noticed it's like attention seeking like he wants attention oh. from mm. me or whatever mm. um mainly probably because i'm not home all the time and um you know there are times i am home where i'm asleep because of a night shift or whatever mm. and um so yeah like he gets very excited if i wake up like he makes a big deal about it 
but it's like straight away wants that attention. I don't blame him, bro. I don't blame him. Mm. But it's it's nice because although I remember bits and pieces of that with my own dad, I don't remember it. I don't remember being that like super excited and eager about my own dad, which mm. is sad. But it's nice that I've got that with my own son, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Oh, we haven't got too long left. Uh, here we go. Are you a defensive person? Are you a defensive person? I like yeah. how it hasn't mirrored it. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, I genuinely think I'm not. Obviously, Yanni, I would say the default for people is to be pretty defensive. But uh, I guess I'm a little less defensive than average person. And that's my judgment anyway. Hmm. I think I am initially but it doesn't last long so i think i'm very quick to i can't hold a grudge and i'm very quick to apologize um i've noticed that like in general in any disagreement i have with someone i can't i feel bad too quickly so like even if i try and say if i did something or whatever i was eventually very defensive about it and i made genuine excuses about whatever so i was defending myself I don't think I'd be able to for much longer. And then like soon after I'd be like, okay, yeah, sorry. That was my bad or whatever. I can't do it. I can't hold on to, you know, I can't guard myself from guilt for too long. Mm. I just have to, I have to come clean. Even if it's something that I genuinely feel like, you know, it was my huck or, you know, I was in the right or whatever it is. I can't hold on to it. I, I don't mm. know why. Is that um, being defensive though? I'm no, thinking... I think, no, it's the opposite, but being defensive initially, no. Mm. you know what i'm saying is like you know let's say me and you had a, some disagreement or whatever initially i would probably be like anyone be very defensive like oh no this is why that happened and this is why that happened but then it won't be long after you know definitely within the same day definitely within the same day um i'd be like yeah do you know what actually sorry about that and blah, blah, blah. And I, I can't help it I'd, right. I'd, even if i genuinely thought that i was in the right and you were in the wrong okay i would still yeah, yeah. i wouldn't be able to defend myself mm. any further i'd have to come to yeah. terms with it maybe i'm the opposite um, then so i'm still defensive but i'm long term defensive not short term <laughs> so yeah in the moment yeah. i might not get into the argument but uh you know 2 days later i'll be like well you said that and actually this 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 <laughs> Oh, I can't do it. Yeah. The rectification means so much more to me. Um, because I don't, I feel like I lose more than I gain by doing that. Like, I feel like the only thing that it's a bit of like that pride thing, like pride is a bit ugly to me. Natural, no, not naturally, but like, because of, because there are certain things in the Dean that have really like drilled their way into me. Things I never really thought knew before I was practicing but certain things just like really like one of them is like regarding a person who has like a mustard seed of, of, of pride in them. Mm. Um, another is like leaving off an argument for the sake of Allah, um, things like that. Those are really like dug deep into my soul mm. almost that the, the moment I'm in a disagreement, I can't like, I, I have to, I just, I feel uncomfortable. I can't keep the pride thing up. I can't, mm. You know, I can't be like, even if I'm, I know I was in the right, I'm, I can't punish. I feel bad for punishing the other person by holding my position. And it's just, yeah, okay. yeah. you know, anyway, it is what it is. Um, let me see. Oh, so Faisal just messaged me. Oh, awesome. So I did a, a poster. I basically did a poster for this power this card game which you can see on my instagram and i i sent him a print apparently he's getting it he just got the frame for it he's getting it framed and put up in the office that's so cool man yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool nice i didn't uh, know if he he was coming anyway i don't know that might be private go on <laughs> fair enough ah i dropped all the cards no oh no now they're in a random order right let's open this one Oh, this is a powerful one. Let's do this. How can you improve your relationship with your parents? How can I? Yeah. How can I improve my relationship with my parents? Well, living with them or near them would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> <A good start. laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Uh, 
this is this is something I need to think about actually. Really? Um, I I improve my ratio. So so it depends, right? So with my mom. Oh no, you've been stumped, bro. Shall I go it's first and help you question, out? Bro. Yeah, go on, go on. I'll think okay. about it. Yeah. Obviously, I'm more local to my parents than you are. Alhamdulillah, my dad's here now. So for me, I feel like, I mean, since everything that's happened recently, I'm in touch with my parents like every day, well, more or less every day now, but mainly for its text. Like we text more than we ever call. Um, however, I think I owe it to my parents to be with them on their own, more like do things with them on their own. So like, I can't remember the last time me and my mom were out on our own or like my dad, me and my dad, like, you know, take my dad out for a coffee or take my mom out shopping or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Where it's just me and them. Mm. Um, I think that's what I'd want to do more. And I also want to see them more. Like since moving out, I see them once every couple of weeks, maybe a bit more. And I live well, not too far away, but it's easier for me to, you know, go, go to work and come back home. It's like you get that torn thing where you're like, oh, do I want to go see my, well, not do I want to, but like, oh, I need to see my kids or I need to see my wife or whatever. Um, and I'll see them on my day off. But like on my days off, I might not be able to, whatever. So it's like, you know, I, I, and also like, I want to, I want them to depend on me, even though they shy away from it this day and age because they see, oh, you, you know, you've got your own family now. They don't really ask me for much anymore. Like they, mm used to even though I, I don't think i'd ever say no to you know any favors or you know whatever so yeah i just want to be more available for them but also spend more time with them on a more personal deeper level and you know on a more social level like just take them out or, you know anyway that's me it's mm. me bro i just noticed i'm crossing my arms which means i'm defensive <laughs> yeah well you know you are yeah you are is that question <laughs> somewhere <laughs> now i guess you know th this kind of question i feel like maybe it, you know shouldn't uh be too open about it uh in public maybe that's why i'm didn't know what to say exactly but yeah i think if i, if I saw my mum more often like if i had a thing where you know one week per quarter or something like that that would that would be good i think that that would uh, that's what one thing i could definitely think of mm -hmm. um with my dad i think you know i think this is the case with many dads it's just they don't need you to like spend time with them or anything they just uh, want you to do things that will make them proud maybe so mm -hmm. just need to uh, do more of that but then if i think what would actually make my dad proud i mean I suppose there's many things I could do that would make him proud. Yeah, but it's not hard to think of, isn't it? So yeah, it's weird. Our relationships are so different because what, the way I like to think of it this day and age is like, what would I want my son to do for me? Like, how would I want my son to treat me? And in that way, when I think like that, I'm like, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like my son to always be in touch with me and always sort of. Do you understand what I mean? Like, I'd like my son yeah. to always be, you know, checking in on me and asking how mm. I was and stuff. So like, but can think, you imagine oh, that? Like when your son's like twenty, because I can't imagine no. it. That's why I'm just judging it based on how my dad is. I'm not judging. Really? It. Yeah, like my dad is definitely like that. I think. Uh, as mm. for me, like I think I'll be the same with my kids. Like, obviously there'll be a minimum level, but mostly, yeah. especially with with sons, I think. I just want them to do good stuff and I can know from a distance they're doing good stuff, you know, uh, maybe my daughters are, uh, appreciate actually spending time with them more. That's just a guess. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Should we do, I know it's a bit short, but should we do one more and then maybe we can do some more in another episode? Yeah. Yeah. This is good. Subhanallah. We turned it into yeah, an actual, this is, this is kind of meta, isn't it? Like yeah. he did a podcast, then he turned into a game, and now we're turning it back into a podcast. Yeah, bro. Yeah, he's still messaging me now about it. Um, Tell him to reply to my WhatsApp. How would he? <laughs> <laughs> bro, he's listen. He's only. I don't know how he's only just replied now, but I've been waiting for him to reply to something else ages ago. So I've sent another message now, and he's 
because you must have just seen it. Anyway, uh, who inspired you the most in your childhood? Do they still inspire you now? Uh, poor inspire. Um, inspire reads. Inspire <laughs> reads. <laughs> Man, I like I'll have that podcast. <laughs> I think um, they got a new one, bro. I haven't checked, but I think they've got Yeah, they one. changed the anyway. name, but then they just weren't consistent again. But inshallah, khair, because it was a good concept. Um, uh, if you if you have an answer, then go ahead. I need to think a little bit. Who? No, I don't have anyone, man. I That was my biggest... For me, it was like my biggest issue. If anything, it was probably my uncle, who was like the youngest uncle I had. And I sort of... I don't know. I just admired his... I don't know why I admire it. not saying there's nothing to admire about him, but like he was quite young when I was young. So yeah, he was, you know, in his teens mm. when I was a kid. So you just sort of naturally gravitate to I don't know, an older male um mm. who isn't too old that you can't connect with them. Mm. Um yeah, so yeah, my youngest uncle, I just yeah, it was like I you know, like I said, there's nothing concrete I could say, oh, because he was did this with his life, who was successful in this, mm. that I was like, I think it's just because he was young and he was cool and I just liked that, you know, I can't really, mm. <laughs> but that was it really, bro. Like I didn't know any professionals that were like, oh, you know, I want to be this one day, I want to be that one day. Um, mm. And I really struggled finding role models throughout my teens, uh, which is why I struggled trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my life. Um, mm. And it wasn't until I started practicing that, you know, the role model of the, the Prophet, so I'll send them the role model of the Prophet, of the, the prophets and the Sahaba. Um, I know it's a very cliche answer, but that transformed me to, you know, from become, from being, from, you know, very in a short space of time, I became someone who's very, you know, classic teenager focused on his friends and his life and that's it, to very being very family focused preferring to spend time with my family, wanting to get married, wanting to settle down, like very, very quickly in a short space of time. Mm. Um, and it wasn't, there was nothing gradual about it. So mm. yeah, so that's probably where the biggest impact came. It started when I started practicing mm. um, because suddenly I had all these, you had like a skeleton to mold yourself on top of, which you didn't really have before. Yeah. Whilst if you, have a, if you have a role model from early, you can be like, oh, I want to be him so bad to so emulate that person, you know, in what he mm. buys and what he, you know, the way he presents himself, the way he speaks, etc. All of the role models I've had, bro, have been since I've started practicing. You know, if you think about it, role models are extremely, extremely uh, important. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it's actually, if you think about it, it's probably fundamental to anybody growing up to be anything decent is to have role models. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I, it's probably something deep in, in humans um, and for thousands of years. Um, it's because... Okay, it's, it's like there's three phases to it. So the first phase is you must have some element of uh, identifying what is a good trait or value. And then from that, you find role models that kind of match that to a next level. Yeah. And then you learn of other traits that that person has. And then you get it. So you've got your the initial traits, but then you learn new traits from looking into a person. And now you've yeah. got even more traits that you want to emulate. And, and you, you know, you just move towards being like that person taking on those traits. Um, in terms of uh, inspiration, honestly, this word is like so vague and whatever, but I think I understand what they mean. So I, I, what, what comes to mind, honestly, what came to mind was, uh, and I don't know how to word this, but I, grow, I remember growing up and thinking of... Uh, how do, how do I word this without getting into trouble? You know, like resistance um, people. <laughs> um, oh, really? People defending like she, the Ummah. I never pronounce his name. No, no, no. Muslim, Muslims. Oh, Muslim um, ones. <laughs> no, no. People, Yanni, defending the Ummah and stuff. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is what I yeah. remember, Yanni. Um, and I was, I was in the UK at that time. And I, I just remember, you know, kind of, I guess, being inspired. I don't know. So... So that's one thing. And the other place is my eldest uncle. And this was when I was probably 11, 12, when I visited Algeria the first time. And just getting yeah. to know my, my elder uncle and 
two of my uncles actually, they're very um, knowledgeable of uh, nature. So all the different trees, how to grow a tree, uh, what, uh, what disease that means. If it has a, the leaves are turning that color, yeah. what does that mean? All that stuff. And then also being able to like uh, weld and make your own like furniture or uh, make your own pipe or you, you fix your own thing or yeah. build your own, build your own room or whatever it is. Um, I have two uncles that are kind of, you know, very knowledgeable in that stuff. And I don't know, I found that pretty cool. And, and my eldest uncle, he was like, like very hard worker and just traveled to, you know, he was the one I think I mentioned before. He didn't have any education until age 14. And then he traveled to get the education and uh, just a hard worker, bro. Like imagine he started school at 14, but now he's got a PhD, he's a professor and all that. So um, that's another one as well. I would say that's like, yeah, inspiration, I suppose. Yeah. Like, mm just being knowledgeable about like being, being a doer, being able to be like, yeah, I know that I know this. And I know how the world works basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's quite cool. And, and my dad definitely a lot. Like, I, I, I don't know what I can pinpoint exactly, but I think it might just my dad's sense of like, um, you know, just, just providing and just going to work every day and just uh, being very kind of, I guess, decisive or stuff like that. Yeah. The leopard. That's good. That's good that you you've got people like that, and it's good for people to have people like that. Um, I was going to say maybe people should email in their answers to the questions that we've got as well. Yeah, that'll um, be really that, good to go through. That yeah. might be interesting. Sure. Um, yeah, we'll do. We'll, there's loads more. Maybe we'll do another part two where we can actually. Maybe one day we do a marathon. Oh, bro! Can you we could do. You know, I got an idea. Yeah, we could do a live episode. Um, where like we're going through these and then the audience can also give their answers and we can like read yeah. some of them and stuff. That would be good. Yeah. Inshallah, why not? Maybe Inshallah. that's what we'll do for episode 100. <laughs> we'll get, we're going to get Faisal to release the game part two. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. All yeah. right, bro. I have to shoot off, Achi. Yes. Yes. Okay, bro. Um, as usual, um, by the way, there's video version of this on YouTube. Just search it. And uh, if you want to give us suggestions, email us uh, your answers to the questions, stuff like that, then go to mindheistpodcast.com and then you can either email us or anonymously contribute there. And um, yeah, share the episode if you enjoyed it. Share other episodes if you enjoyed them. And yeah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Shadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum